Hi everyone, it's Sue, and welcome to an extra special edition of my YouTube channel. I decided to try a challenge by Unicorn Dust Designs called Try It Tuesday. So I will put in the description box below the rules for Try It Tuesday for her channel. So please go check her out, she's awesome. But basically the last Tuesday of every month, you need to try out some DIY designs by some of your favorite creators and give them a huge shout out. You have to have at least three different designs in each video. So today I am going to be embracing my spring lemon theme and make four DIYs by some of my favorite creators. So if you'd like to see which ones I picked, let's get started. So I absolutely love the lemon theme that's popular right now, so I didn't have any trouble finding lots of DIYs to recreate. My challenge for this challenge was finding materials because here in Ontario, we are under a major lockdown again, and the government is really restricting what we can and cannot buy in person. So when I went to my local Dollar Tree and saw this sign plastered everywhere, I just about cried. No craft supplies are allowed to be sold, only groceries and toiletry items. Oh well, I would have to use my ingenuity and see what I had around the house. So my first DIY were these adorable little birdhouses with lemon themes on them. And they were by Savvy Crafts by Savannah. And I will put links to all of these DIYers in my description box below. So please go check them out. So she used some adorable scrapbook paper and some of these little birdhouses from the Dollar Tree. But like I said, I could not buy any of these supplies. So I had to print out my own lemon paper. And I also had this home sign, which I thought I could cut out and use for the pieces of the birdhouses. So I removed this little galvanized heart and saved it for later. So luckily I already had these signs on hand and I removed the little tag on them and decided to cut out some rectangular shapes for my birdhouses. Now I don't know why I had a mental breakdown and I should have just cut out birdhouse shapes, but no, no. I just went with rectangles, but it works out in the end. So I just used my X-Acto knife and cut out two rectangular shapes. And I liked the fact that the one birdhouse she had, she painted on the shiplap look, and this sign already had shiplap on the other side. So I decided to paint one side from the back and one side from the shiplap side. Next, I used my sanding block just to get rid of any rough edges that were as a result of me cutting it because this chipboard stuff really does start to fray. I also used the sanding block as well as my hair dryer to try to peel off as much of the paper as I could. Then I used this Rust-Oleum white chalk paint and again painted one side from the back and one side from the shiplap side. And I put a couple of coats on it. I did end up painting both sides just so that it would look neat and tidy.
Then I took some black acrylic paint and a small brush and just kind of covered in the grooves a little bit and gave it a bit of a distressed look. Went back over it again with the chalk paint and let it dry completely. So now that I had my smooth side and my shiplap side, I was going to take the picture of lemons that I printed out just from Google and I was going to Mod Podge onto the smooth side. Now on the shiplap birdhouse, she had a cute little uh, wooden tag that she had cut out and I have this beautiful little box that had soap in it that had lemons on it and I'm going to be using part of that for my next DIY and I decided to use it to cut out the tag from. So I just traced around my birdhouse piece uh, onto the paper and just cut it out a little bit bigger and then I used the Mod Podge to affix the paper to the birdhouse and put more Mod Podge on top. Now it did wrinkle up quite a bit so maybe I should have let it completely dry before I put the Mod Podge on top but live and learn and again rustic farmhouse is the key. Next, I took my soap box and cut out a tag shape and set it aside. Once the Mod Podge was completely dry, I just took my sanding block and smoothed off any excess paper. Now it was about this point where I realized that I needed a roof for my birdhouse and thought, hmm, that was dumb, why didn't I just cut the pieces of wood into birdhouse shapes instead of rectangles because now I'm going to have a bit of a gap there. Oh well, live and learn. So I took these large popsicle sticks and just cut them in half and I thought, well, I can make it work. So I just fashioned them into the shape of a roof and then glued them with some hot glue in place. Then to match the original, I took some black acrylic paint and painted the roof of the house. Then took my Gorilla Glue and attached the painted roof to the actual birdhouse. And I thought it turned out pretty cute.
So I repeated the process on the shiplap birdhouse, then just took some um, twine and wrapped it around the middle of the birdhouse. And then I tied a little bow with some jute twine as well, stuck it on there with the tag and put a little button in the middle. And I thought it turned out pretty good. And now that my two birdhouses were done, I put them in my little coffee bar. And here is how they turned out. And I want you to compare it to the original one. So mine are on the right and the originals are on the left. Let me know in the comment section below how you think I made out. DIY number two was from the same creator, but I thought it was just too cute to pass up. So she had this little wooden sign that says lemons five cents. Now I could have made this out of Jenga blocks, but again, I had the bottom of this soap box that already had lemons on it and it was the perfect size. So I thought, why not? So I printed out some Buffalo check paper from the computer and just traced around the box, cut out the paper and then glued it to the bottom of the box. I did have some yellow vinyl on hand, so I did use my Cricut Maker to print out lemons five cents, but I could not for the life of me find the cents sign anywhere on Cricut Maker, so I just wrote out the word. Then I attached it to the box and I thought it was pretty stinking cute. So again, mine is on the right, hers is on the left. Which one do you think looks better? Let me know. Now on to DIY number three. I had one of these mason jar signs from the Dollar Tree already on hand from Halloween, but it was a bit bigger. And this one comes from Rhea's World of Ideas. So again, check out her channel below. So I had this mason jar that says, I've got my eyes on you, and it was 50 cents from last year's Halloween. So I flipped it over, took off all the bows and removed the sign on the front. Now this was not an easy process. This was glued on here pretty good. So after prying and ripping, 
I realized that I was not going to be able to paint on this side because I couldn't really sand it down enough to make it smooth. So I came up with an idea to use some craft paper to cover this up and make it the back and paint on the other side which was nice and smooth. So a little bit of glue on the glue stick and this craft paper covered up the hot mess and made the perfect backing for my sign. And while the glue was drying, I could use the excess craft paper to cover up any paint spills. So I used my white Rust-Oleum chalk paint again and put a coat of white paint all over the whole mason jar and let it dry. Put about two coats on. Then when that was dry, I took some silver acrylic paint and just painted the lid, put a couple of coats on it. And when it was completely dry, I took a black Sharpie and just put some details from the lid on it. Then I printed out this really cute saying to put on my mason jar and glued it on with a glue stick and then I put some Mod Podge over top, wrapped some jute twine around the lid and here's what it looks like. Mine is on the right, hers is on the left. Again, let me know. And finally, this last DIY was so easy peasy lemon squeezy I could hardly call it a craft, but I fell in love with it. This cute galvanized little tin with some yellow flowers in it. And it was brought to you by Bargain Bethany, so check out her channel too. So luckily I already had four of these little galvanized pails with the jute twine already on them from the Dollar Tree and I just printed out this cute lemonade sign from the internet and I just had some glue and Mod Podge if I needed it but what I didn't have were the pretty yellow flowers and of course I could not buy them from the Dollar Tree or Walmart so I looked out my kitchen window and voila I looked at my forsythia bush so I thought hmm, they're beautiful bright yellow flowers I could cut those off and put them in my vase. Now, I don't know how long they'll last, and if anybody knows how to save these, I don't know if you put them in water or not, I did not, or if you can spray them and save them, let me know. So I basically just cut out the paper label and glued it onto the vase and put the flowers in it, and voila, I thought it looked very pretty. So again, mine is on the right, theirs is on the left, let me know what you think and I put it all together in my coffee bar and jazzed it up for spring. So please let me know in the comment section below whether you like my lemon theme. And see you next time on Discovering the Art of Living.